Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dominic, I'm the host of The Android Factory. In the last episode, we implemented KTOR. We added in a little client here to help us make network calls. We made our first network call here, fetching a character by its ID. And we're using that response inside of our uh, main activity for now. We're just printing out the character name here. So for character ID 55, the name is uh, Boopluzian or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But if you are not familiar, if you have not been following the series, we are using the Rick and Morty API here. One of my favorites out there can build some really interesting things here. And I want to talk to you about the mapper layer, why it's important, what it's about, how we're going to use it, and show you a little bit of an example here. So as we get started, smash that like button to help me out. Subscribe if you are brand new, and let's just hop right into it. So in this API, we have a variety of different things we can fetch. One of them is the character model. So one thing I want us to look at here, I know it's just the table of stuff here, but if we can look at the different keys, types, and descriptions here, we'll see that we get back something like a status, it is a string, and then it tells us here what it actually is, right? The status of the character, they're either alive, dead, or unknown. So Okay, interesting. We already have a bunch of different options that are going to come back, but we also know all of the possibilities that are going to come back for this particular field. Similarly here for the gender object, right, or the gender uh, key, we know that they are either going to be f female, male, genderless, or unknown. And so this allows us to actually make some intelligent decisions between our network models and our domain models. So let's bounce over to the code here inside of our network package that we've been building out here. I went ahead and restructured them some things. So inside of, uh, let's see, yeah, inside of the entire uh, package now, we have a models package. This now has the domain and remote models. Uh, this remote character class here actually maps to the uh, the JSON structure that we were just seeing, we were just talking about. And then in here in our domain package, we have, uh, you know, the domain character that we're going to use internally to our app. And then with that here, as we talked about gender and status, we actually have different ways of describing the possibilities that can come back from the network here, right? So we have in our status, we have alive, dead, and unknown. And in our gender class, we have male, female, genderless, unknown. So I want to just talk about this a little bit, explain how we're going to use it and why it's so powerful, especially with Compose. I have some pretty interesting things to show you, so stick around, it's going to get fun. Let's just take a look at this uh, declaration here, right? We've created a sealed class called character gender. And now the, you know, the benefits of sealed class is very much in line with the benefits of enum. Uh, but it's basically, you know, the concept when, when you know the different possibilities that you want to account for, we can describe them more effectively inside of our code by using something like an enum or a sealed class, gives you a little bit more functionality. This one's straightforward, the character status has a little bit more in it, and I'll show you that in a minute. But basically, in order to be a character gender, you have to supply a display name. This is going to be helpful for when we're actually displaying things in the UI inside of Compose. So we have our different objects here to map to the different options that are available uh, from the API. And then the display name here, they mostly mimic what the actual type is. But if you see here, just a simple example, gender list is what comes back from the API, but we're going to display no gender. Or when they have unknown coming back from the API, we're going to display a string called not specified. Right, so it actually kind of allows us to decouple our uh, our code, our UI, our implementation from the network models, right? Which is super, super powerful. And if we walk over here to the character status, it gets even a little bit more interesting because my concept here with this with this sealed class is okay. We're going to take a display name, but we're also going to take a color, right? Because why not? We're just going to use a color as as a way to kind of also represent you know the status of this character. So we have alive, dead, and unknown. And so when they are alive, we're going to have the, you know, alive uh, display name, but we're going to have a color green associated with that. So I don't know, we're going to put a little dot, we're going to put a little check mark, we're going to put a little something there, and we have a color associated with it. Similarly, for the dead and unknown cases, we have different colors to kind of attach to those different statuses. Inside of Compose, this is going to become extremely simple to, to create and a lot of fun once we actually get into the creation of the UI here. But when we look at our character model, inside of uh, the model here, we've declared the gender as a gender, a character gender type. And we've declared the status field as a character status type. Both of these fields do not match to anything that is here, right? Status here is a string. It tells us that right now. And gender here is a string. So in order for this to work, we actually need our remote model, whatever we're trying to parse the JSON into, we need that to match what comes back from the API. So we're going to have a gender here described as a string. We're going to have a status here described as a string. 
But then our character model is a little bit different. I'm sorry, our domain model is a little bit different. And it's for us internally as developers to work with this with, you know, a much nicer, uh, a much nicer wrapper around this entire string that we got back for gender or for status, as opposed to needing to do, you know, if gender equals equals male, do this, if gender equals equals female, do that. No, we're going to cut that out as quickly as we can so that we have a very nice way to encapsulate all of the character information by the time we get this, you know, information to our, uh, our, our UI layer, our domain layer, all that kind of good stuff. So the trick here is how do we go from this remote model to this domain model? And that is done with uh, what's called the mapping layer. And in this case, I'm actually just going to create an extension function on the remote character class calling it to domain character, and we'll see why in a little bit. But basically here, we are we are a remote character. We need to return a regular character, right? So then we're just going to go ahead and return a character. A lot of the information is going to be the same. We'll see here that the episode and created con content is the same. The ID is the same. The image URL is the same. But in the uh, remote model, it's called image. And in the domain model, it's called image URL, right? Because that's just like a little bit easier, a little bit nicer. They have something here, a field that's called episode, but it's actually a list of strings, which represents all of the episodes that they're a part of. And not only is it strings, but it's actually URLs to those particular episodes that the character was a part of. So we went ahead and updated the uh, domain model to actually be called episode URLs. So whether you want to change just the field name or whether you want to change the actual data type or structure of things, you can use a mapping layer to actually accomplish that. So really quickly here, we have the, the ways that we're kind of, uh, you know, folding the strings for the gender and status into those objects that we created. So we have our branching logic here, and it's pretty straightforward, right? We just say when our gender, we're of course going to call to lowercase or lowercase or uppercase, whatever you want to do, just so that your logic here is always successful. And we're just simply going to say if it's female, then we have character gender female. And if it's male, then it's, you know, male. And, and, and we just kind of come up with all the different options that we can run into. And so at this point, our character gender, once that runs, is now in the correct data type that we care for. Similarly, for the status, it's the exact same concept. And then when we return our character model, we just end up adding in this information here so that you know we make ends meet. And now externally from the API call, we're now dealing with this data class, which we care a lot more for, which has a lot better you know, ways of describing different fields here, gender and, and status. And then we've, of course, like I mentioned here, we updated a few field names, image URL, episode URLs, because it just makes more, you know, semantic sense for what the data actually represents. And that's basically it here. I don't know if you've been following along, but there's really nothing else uh, that I changed from the previous episode. The only concept here is that when we are making a call to the character uh, endpoint here, we have to specify what data type we want it to uh, you know, to, to try to parse as. So we tell it to basically, you know, get the character at this ID, the body of that response, we're going to try to parse into the remote character. And then here is that extension function call dot two domain character, right? So now this one function here is making a network call, parsing it as a remote network response, right, to match that model, and then converting that remote model into the domain model that we care for. And that is what's being returned. If we check the use case here, we're just simply, you know, using it up here, right? In the previous episode, if you saw where we're just saving the state of that character, and then eventually, you know, we display the character's name on screen once we get something back from the API call. So that's basically it. Stick around for a little bit more extra credit because we're actually going to start to see how this can work inside of Compose and why this model is is, is really, really powerful. Uh, so I'm just going to build out a few composables here, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay, so here we go. We have a character status component, and it takes in that character status that we created on that domain object, right? And very simple here, we just have a column with two text elements in it, a little bit of formatting, a little bit of display stuff, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, quickly touching on it, we have just the modifier with basically wrapped content. We have a nice little background with a rounded corner shape. We give it a border, but the color of the border here is attached to the color of that character status, right? Again, the rounded corner shape 12, we do a little bit of fancy stuff with the padding and we end up with a little bit of a result that we see over here on the right, right? Where now, you know, because of the power of Compose, we can just give this single component this one bit of information, which we mapped cleanly from our network layer to our domain layer. And, you know, the composable here is very, very simple. You know, I don't know if this is the final design that we're going to go with, but just as an example, right, we have our text element here from that display name. We have our color of the border that we want to go with. 
you know, a little bit of font size magic and all that stuff to make it look the way that it does. And then down here, we just have the previews to get all of these on screen. But, you know, that is kind of what I'm thinking here between, you know, the character status, the character gender, anything else that we want to do, we can just create single little Lego blocks components that we can use inside of, you know, larger screens, right? We can attach this to like a character detail screen or maybe even a character screen or whatever the case is, right? We can just cleanly reuse this. If we ever want to change the design here, we just come into this one component, change things around. We already have all the data that we need here, right? And that just goes back to how this sealed class was uh, created, the different bits of information that we have. If we ever want to add something else to it, I don't know, font size if we want configured here for some reason, or uh, an, another color if we want to do a gradient, or who knows what, right? Like as long as we have the data appropriately uh, described here, building out these different components is going to become a little bit more trivial. So I hope that makes sense. If it's something that you knew before and needed a refresher, I'm happy to do that. If this is stuff brand new to you, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Really appreciate you making it this far in the video. Very excited to continue this series, so subscribe so you do not miss out. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.